the Wayne very important step. Remember, Shrimp Wayne is like Jamie Oliver, full of shit. <laughs> Chef Brian Tsao here, not your typical chef, and today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger Love Insane Egg Fried Rice Technique featuring Adam Liao. Before I go on with today's episode, I do wanna give a shout out to my newest sous chef level patron, Christian Milbrand. Thank you so much for your support. You, along with all the patrons, really do make a difference on this channel. And for those of you who are watching and wanna support further, please consider becoming a patron. Be sure to visit the link in the description below. By becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new videos, priority on suggesting new ones, but most importantly, exclusive content. That's right, I have started doing exclusive content, so if you want to see that, become a patron. And finally, if you can do me a favor and follow me on Instagram, at Chef Brian Sao, that would be greatly appreciated. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Uncle Roger filming in different cool. location today because we got special guests here. Please welcome Uncle Adam Liao. Oh, Liao. Okay, first of all, uh, Adam, sorry I mispronounced your name in the last video. I think some people in the comments mentioned it, but obviously reading it and hearing it are two separate things. Sorry for mispronouncing your last name. Uncle Roger, I reviewed Adam Liao video recently, Yangzhou Fire Rice, and he didn't get Uncle title. But then I go on his channel and he made me Ying Yang Fire Rice, and that very good. So now he is ah, Uncle Adam. Okay, hey, congrats, Uncle Adam. And let me uh, let let me guys let me know if you guys want to see me react to that video as well. I'm actually uh, pretty curious. I'm so proud. Good, good, you should be, you should be. <laughs> Even Gordon don't have uncle title. So today we review this video. Uncle Wang Gang, the most professional chef. He making the dish you make, you think he gonna be better than you? More than likely. This guy is the man. I just recently did a video of his, Buddha jumps over the wall. This guy, as far as Chinese cookery goes, I mean, it, it's he's as pro as it gets, and I am excited to see this. See, mm, Uncle Roger Zotai like fun. Uncle Wang Gang because he got sensible haircut. What is this? <laughs> man bun and goatee, <laughs> what you're trying to be? Hi, yeah. <laughs> trying to look like Post Malone, but he looked more like Post Alone. <laughs> I can't believe I'm getting roasted by a virgin in an orange polo shirt. Virgin! <laughs> Uncle Roger pounding all the time. <laughs> I don't just pound Thai green curry. Virgin. This is a good tip. You can either add it when you are cooking the rice or like this when you're doing it afterwards and just rub it through. It makes the rice less sticky and it glistening. Just like a forehead. So he's clearly using day old rice, pre cooked rice. When you put it into the bowl, it wasn't steaming, so we know that it's fully cool. Ideally, you want to use day old rice. You don't have to use day old rice. I've mentioned this in my past videos. Ideally, day old rice. But if you can't, you lay out the cooked rice onto sheet trays so that the excess moisture can dissipate. Basically, you just want it to be cool and that will give you the best fried rice possible. I, in my professional career or in my entire life, have, uh, have never seen somebody put lard and mix it into the rice for the sake of making egg, uh, uh, any type of fried rice later. So this is completely new to me, but it makes a lot of sense because Every grain of rice will get coated. That will help, as Uncle Roger said, help with grain separation, but also will, um, I think it not only flavor, and not only will it add great flavor, but it will like better roast every grain of rice. That principle is the same if you're cooking the rice and you add the, the oil as you're going, but I have to imagine by coating it and then cooking it, like from the get-go, the heat transfer to the oil, to the rice will cause every grain to get like almost a nutty flavor. I'm very curious to see what the end result is. This is good start. Instead of happy ending, Uncle Wang Gang give us happy beginning. Oh, God. Sea cucumber, sea cucumber, good. Cucumber. Very fancy. Cucumber. A very expensive ingredient. Very expensive. Good. Ham. But you see, yeah, he's using the nice Swanwei ham from Yunnan. Mm -hmm. He should probably be using Rugao ham from Jiangsu, which is where Yangzhou is. I don't want to comment on Wang Gang. No, comment on him. Thing, but like, 
feel free to comment on him. This is what we're doing. What do you think this video is? So uh, Adam Liao uh, clearly has a good command over what ingredients come from what region of China. Definitely knows better than me. Very impressive uh, and very cool. You need to provide some value to our listener. It's one gun. Everybody can fuck up. <laughs> yes, thousand percent. Everybody can fuck up. I've built my entire career fucking up. When you fuck up, you know what not to do next. So I think it's very important to fuck up. Be a fuck up. See how he's chopping. He's chopping so fast. Have you seen how you chop? Go watch <laughs> Uncle Adam chopping. It's slower than Starbucks Wi-Fi. Oh, oh, wow, look at, so he, they didn't show me, I don't know if they didn't show it in the original video or if they cut it for Uncle Roger, but that, his knife technique, man. Go watch Uncle you, Adam chopping, how, it's slower than Starbucks on, Wi-Fi. Let's, let's see, yeah, you see how finely minced that is? Cut these slices, and then he probably stacked them and cut them into strips, then he stacked the strips, and then he cut them into little brunoise shapes. Uh, again, wonderful knife skills. Nice chicken thigh, good. No, don't use chicken breast. <laughs> I like the different ingredients he's using. It shows that it's a very high-end fried rice. When you're combining ingredients from the ocean, the land, and from the mountains together, that's when you know it's like a high-end dish. From the mountains, bamboo shoot. Mm. And nice chopping. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. Cut it cut it into slices, then strips, then he takes the strips and he cuts them into tiny little pieces. Yeah. What I like about him, he just say he chopping. He don't say shit like Masadwan. In French cooking, you'd call that a Masadwan. No pretentious Le Corton Blue bullshit. <laughs> Actually, right now he's cutting a little bit more like a Brunoise. There you go, Brunoise. <laughs> Do you go to cooking school? No, no. The way you learn all this, you went on Wikipedia and you memorize, <laughs> you memorize the cutting name. You a nut. You a nut. <laughs> hey, hey, who the word in? Yo, nerds run the world, baby. They run the world. Nice. So Mushroom, scallop, dry seafood, very umami. All good umami yep. ingredients. Yeah, so he's choosing the ingredients based on the umami, trying to get umami Dude, into the dish, Adam's and then also the texture, it. because the bamboo shoot's gonna be a bit crunchy, <laughs> the sea cucumber a bit springy, the chicken meaty, and then that shredded texture of the dried scallops, which is also providing the umami, and then the peas are gonna be a little bit of sweetness there. Yeah, this one okay if you don't use MSG. Oh, statement from Uncle Roger. Ooh, motion so smooth. Mm. The Wayne, very important step. Remember, Shrimp Wayne is like Jamie Oliver, full of shit. Then we add the He's going to blanch the shrimp there so the starch swells up around the shrimp as it boils and actually preserves the moisture of the shrimp. Mm. Nice cracking. One-handed. Oh. It's always a fancy dish when you're using not the same number of egg whites and egg yolks. Because then you've got to find something to do with the egg whites. Oh, you just throw it up? <laughs> no. Why do you think he's filtering with colander? is to get the, the albumin out of the white. You never completely mix the yolk and the white. So if you don't put it through a colander, you might get some white spots. Uncle yeah. Roger think colander for egg, okay. Just don't use colander to drain your life. Yeah. Adam really knows his shit. Even in that last video, you know, I gave him a little crap about his editing style and how much he talked and stuff. But listen, you know, it was also half joking. Uncle Roger was kind of digging into him a little bit too, but there is no doubt this dude is really knowledgeable and knows his stuff. And he mentioned he didn't go to culinary school, you know, so he just is passionate and really enjoys his craft. I really respect the dude. Spring onion, good. <laughs> nice walk. Okay, using some oil. So much oil for you. Notice he put it through the colander 
could be to get out any type of sediment that may possibly be in there. That's the only reason why I could think of it. If I'm making making an educated guess, we saw from the very beginning of the video, he was streaming in the oil, uh, egg into the oil. So I'm assuming this is the step he's about to go to. We saw that he didn't pre-season the wok. It's not necessary because basically he's using the wok to deep fry at this point. So he just got it hot, poured the oil right in. What? Yeah. Is, is he? Testing temperature with his finger. This guy is machine for you. Well, if you do it before it burns you, it'll be totally fine. This guy don't even give a shit about heat thermometer for pussies. <laughs> Let me just finger my oil. <laughs> do you do this in your kitchen? So, sometimes, sometimes. Another tip. If you touch something hot and then you want to get the temperature out of your fingers, you hold your earlobe. Because the earlobe has very few nerve endings and it can help you disperse the heat from your fingers so you don't burn your fingers. Yeah, that's kind of fucking gross. <laughs> ah, look at that. You saw that he took the walk off of the heat. So, he, I mean, Wang Gang really like, just has great attention to detail. Basically, the oil was hot enough to accomplish what he needed. Probably pulled it off, maybe put it back on. Again, great attention to detail. Ooh, look at those threads. He making egg into little string. And also notice he's keeping the egg, uh, the oil uh, swirling so that as the egg goes into the oil, it doesn't just go straight to the bottom because the oil's consistently in motion. As soon as the egg hits it, it'll spin around and it won't clump up or stick to the bottom. Yeah, it's a very cool technique. You actually also do it, instead of into oil, you can do it into sugar syrup and you make a lot of Thai style sweets. You know, you see the golden oh, thread cool. sweets. Look nice. That's so impressive. Look at this. You're making little shred wow. of egg. It looks Very so cool. good. It's like egg floss he's making. And Uncle Roger loves how much oil he used. See, he used this much oil to make egg. Uncle Wang Gang, he's such a good chef. Cholesterol don't fuck with him. Shrimp good. Look at that fire. So satisfying. This like some lot of the ring shit. This is where the ring is made. When you add the shrimp into the water like that, you have to keep it moving very quickly. Otherwise, it's going to stick together because there's a lot of cornstarch there. Mm. If the water is boiling really fast and you move it quite fast as well, it will stay separate. Yeah, nice. Nice oil again. Seasoning the wok. Uh, look at that again. Just the, the wok is so powerful. And again, he just knows that if he's gonna add this, the wok's hot enough, he can pull it off the heat, add in all the ingredients, it'll cool the wok, it'll cool, cool the oil. I mentioned in past videos that, uh, in at least in my experience, the wok stoves typically have a lever where, as almost every stove has some kind of lever, but it's actually placed by your knee. So you use your knee because your hands are working, right? So you use your knee, I can't show you guys here, but you use your knee to turn it on and off. Uh, but in his case, this is a big giant wok. He's probably just, like I said, pulling pulling it off the heat, back onto the heat. Good. Curly. Chicken thigh go in. Haishen curly. Sea cucumber go in. Sun curly. Bamboo shoot go in. Nice. The shrimp from earlier. Back onto the heat. Oh, look, there's that little bar, a stainless steel bar. So when he pulls the wok off, it actually holds it in place. So yeah, it's this wok station is designed for that style uh, to, to, to work that way. Nice tossing. Nice. Ooh. It's a lot of egg. Yeah. I think he's going to make you a see big how portion fast his of cooking uh, is? fried he rice. Cooking like he running late for train Uncle Roger like that. But that's not your style of cooking. Your style <laughs> of cooking like doing yoga. <laughs> it's like meditation. I like, I think cooking should be relaxing. Your customer all pissed off at you. Half an hour, they sitting there and you're just meditating in your kitchen. <laughs> if Uncle Adam filming this video, it would look like this. <laughs> like the different ingredients. A fucking filter. Man, <laughs> from mountains together. Um, umami, trying to get umami into the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, Uncle, oh man, Adam, Uncle Adam is, is such a good sport, man. Love this. Nice, good. Rice, green peas. Green peas. Adding towards the end. You know, when you uh, cook any type of 
green vegetable, or in this case, these peas, if you cook them too much, then they'll start to look like almost like sludge soup, sewage green. You, you wanna get it to the point where, fuck, I, the chlorophyll, right? Last time I said chloroplast, okay. So the chlorophyll in the cells of, you know, these green peas, when they get hot, it'll expand against the cell walls. And that's why uh, typically when you cook a, uh, anything green, uh, when you apply some heat, the, the green color actually gets more brilliant. But as you keep cooking it, then the, the, the sugars in the chlorophyll will actually caramelize. And then what happens when something caramelizes? Well, it turns more brown. And what do you get when you mix brown and green? Then it starts to look kind of sludgy and gross. So Chef Wang Gong, Master Chef Wang Gong, uh, by adding it at this end stage towards the end is the, is the right move so that he doesn't overcook his peas, number one, but doesn't lose that brilliant, bright green color. Cha. See, spring, nice spring onion, onion last at the thing. End. Uncle Adam Weijo in his Yangzhou fire rice, he put spring onion first thing. Hiya. I think you need to add spring onion twice. Personally, I think you get more fragrance when you fry a little bit at the beginning. Which I agree with. If you see my video, which the link will pop up here, I'm still trying to get that uncle title. So y'all check it out and make sure you tag Nigel to uh, or Uncle Roger to check it out. I like to put the white segments of the uh, spring onion in at the beginning or not at the beginning, you know, basically after I've cooked my egg early in because I feel it works. And I agree with what Adam's about to say that uh, frying the s spring onion a little bit does add a lot of great flavor, but you don't want to do it with the green segments because that's where it can get slimy and wilted. Whereas the white segments, they don't have as much moisture, which is why I think it works. And then you put the green segments all the way at the end. And then add it later at the end for the freshness and the texture. That's what I think. But it's gonna start wilting. I think It'll wilting start. is okay. Wilting okay? As long as you add some more at the end for a little bit of extra texture. You like flaccid spring onion? <laughs> Wilting, I feel bad for your wife now, Wilting. Okay, hiya. <laughs> he could have added like uh, Hong Lo Bo to this. Hong Lo Bo? What is that? Carrot? Carrot. Because when you're making balanced Chinese food, you want a mix of colors. For something like this, you would want more red in there. That's my only criticism. Okay, okay. But Uncle Roger don't like vegetable. So the <laughs> less vegetable, the better. <laughs> Spring onion second time? That's what I said too. <laughs> yeah, but he add some to release the fragrance and then you add more towards the end for the extra texture. But he put it all at the end. He didn't start with spring onion. You know who started with spring onion? Jamie Oliver. <laughs> Seriously. Have you seen that video? And we'll get them yeah, that, that was just right away. Yeah. Jamie's was also cut so unevenly as well. 20 million views, you haven't seen? Yeah. I haven't seen it, no. But I like Jamie Oliver. You like what? Jamie? What the fuck? Whoa, wait, what? What did you say? Why I even here? Yeah, yeah. He put mango chutney in his butter chicken. Yeah. I, yeah, okay, fair, fair. He used three chili for Thai green curry. That's fair, three. yeah. Yeah, you still like him? I like some of the things he does. <sighs> we cannot be friends. No. Oh, so, 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 so. Saw how he said, put some soy sauce on the side of the wok. When you add the soy sauce directly onto the fried rice, you will be adding the moisture directly onto the rice. And what's one of the key things you want in a good fried rice is that it's dry, a lot of grain separation. By putting the soy sauce onto the uh, directly onto the side of the wok versus right on top of the rice, number one, you're achieving more wok hay but you are dissipating more of the moisture quickly because the fried rice itself will have plenty of moisture. So it will stick onto the side of the pan. It'll almost look like it's about to burn, but as soon as you throw that soy sauce on, you wanna to start tossing again. There's enough moisture in that fried rice to break off any of that soy and put it back in. So you're getting the flavor, but none of the moisture. You always wanna to add to the side of the wok anything that has firstly alcohol, because soy sauce is actually alcoholic. It's about 3% alcohol, so a little bit like a mid-strength light but beer. If you add it directly idea, to the rice, no. you get one part of the rice, that's so much soy sauce, and the rest not enough. So when you put it against the side of the wok and then toss into it, you're gonna get even distribution. Uncle Roger didn't know that soy too? sauce got alcohol. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Next time the bar closed, I just drink Kikoman. <laughs> Uncle Adam, let's have a few drink. Cheers. Cheers, oh, cheers. Please don't.
Ugh. <laughs> oh, I drunk now. <laughs> 如果是其中永秋热，然后翻炒出锅气之后加入剩余的葱花翻炒。Oh, oh, 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 oh Water consistently on top of this wok stove. If you guys want to check it out, watch the other Wang Gang video I did. But that is by design because these wok burners are so freaking powerful that they need this water to actually keep the wok stove、uh, from burning. You know, from getting too hot, and、uh, you know, over time it'll wear down. Obviously, so、uh, there's always a source of water. That is keeping the wok stove cool. In the past,、uh, Chinese restaurants that I worked at, there's actually a tube with holes in it on the side of where the chef is working, and then the water shoots downwards because the wok stove is actually designed a little bit on an incline. Water comes out of this pipe, it streams down, and it cools everything off. In this case, you can see there's consistently a stream of water going into the center. It's keeping it cool. It flows out, goes onto the wok, you know, over the surface of the wok stove. Just figured I'd mention that. What Uncle Roger liked about this cooking video is it very focused on the food. He、mm. barely show his face. Not like some people we know, <laughs> talking the whole time on his face the whole time. Your whole cooking video, your face show more than your spring onion. Hi ya. I feel like you need to explain to people why you're doing something before you do it. Your style very slow and sensual. <laughs> Uncle Wang Kang just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> hey man, both styles work. Like I said, I was kind of digging into Adam a little bit. For me, my personal style of video, I. Tried my best to find the balance. No one's perfect, but、uh, some of you guys gave me shit for giving him shit about that. But again, it was half-heartedly joking. I totally agree, though. You know, Adam likes to explain it and give a lot more detail in depth, whereas Wang Gang's video was much more like fire, fire, go, go, go. And、uh, they're both entertaining、uh, in their own ways. I prefer the latter. Oh fuck, dude! 一道非常美味的扬州炒饭就制作完成。I have never seen Yang Zhou fried rice Look like、nice. that. Looks nice. Looks good. Looks good.、Mm. Wow. For you, all the rice separate. Yeah. Nice color. Look at the string of egg. That why he yeah, called、dude. Uncle Wang Gang for a reason. Yeah.、So、He's、good. the boss. Chef Wang Gang, absolutely outstanding. No one can touch the guy as far as Chinese cookery goes. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sound, not your typical chef. And I'll see you really soon.